Nigeria's National Assembly, as in the past, boasted of reputable members as principal officers, but the Eighth House of Representatives is blessed with a vibrant chief whip, born to a Hausa Fulani political family in Kano State. Our guest today is proud of the journalism profession, having graduated with a first class in mass communication. The Sunday interview will return in a moment to unveil the real story of this brilliant mind. I'm Jokele Jadu. Stay with us. In just one year, TVC News Nigeria has redefined broadcast journalism, pushing the boundaries, breaking barriers, breaking the news with state-of-the-art technology, with more people on the ground and more resources across the country. Providing informed views, reviews and reviews. We are everywhere you expect us to be. We are first with the news. TVC News Nigeria. First, accurate, reliable. It's good to have you join us on this edition of the Sunday Interview. This week, we are chatting with a four-time honorable member who has risen to become the chief whip of the Federal House of Representatives. He is Honorable Alassane Ado Dogwa. I, and I hope I'm correct with the name. Absolutely. Representing Dogwa Tunduwanda Federal Constituency of Kano State. You're welcome to the show, sir. It's my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> All right, sir. Now, I I'm going to start like this. You were no doubt born into um, a political family. You know, your dad being, you know, an active member of the defunct PRP. Yes. Now, would you say that, what, let me ask you what we would say your growing up was like. Mm. What was growing up like for you? Uh, I think, uh, like you rightly said, uh, I was born into a political family. And uh, basically being born into that family, I was inspired by the political activities of my parents who are still alive and uh, given the nature of the modern day democracy it's like i've taken over from where my dad has stopped mm. i could remember precisely uh, i started into politics uh, at a point when this issue of uh, eligibility to contest election captures the issue of western education oh. politics in those days in our places it has to do with people who have the commitment to serve humanity. Mm. It, does not matter, it does not matter whether you went to school Your or not. Your class of education. Your class of education. And in those days, our parents uh, uh, went only to Islamic schools. Mm -hmm. But that did not stop them from participating in active politics. Mm. So for me, it was like uh, continuing from where my, pe my own Your father had stopped. Had stopped. Yeah. And it has given me all the encouragement. It has given me all the enthusiasm. Even though I am not his first son, mm. uh, if you are going by count, I'm about the 10th person wow. in the hierarchy of mm -hmm. the, uh, the, uh, the... Yeah, the dog was. Mm. But for God in his infinite mercy has uh, granted me this opportunity to take over from the mantle of leadership as precisely as when my dad had stopped. Mm. Uh, I was born a little uh, in the late 60s. And uh, I had my education in the same Kano state, right from primary school to university. Mm -hmm. I went to Bayero University, Kano, like you said, mm -hmm. uh, where I also graduated in mass communications. I think uh, in Bayero University, I was the only graduate of mass communications. First so class. A first class degree. Wow. I'm proud about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has been so often now. Uh, God in his infinite mercy, because of the background I have in politics, mm -hmm. uh, it did not matter to me to continue the profession of journalism mm. and now found myself being a, a born a born politician <laughs> okay so let me ask you if you had not been a politician yes would you have practiced journalism obviously up till now i envy the practice of journalism up till now because that was what i was trained for i still look at myself as coming uh from a background of, 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 of people in the media and whether you like it or not that sentiment is still in me the training i've acquired as a trained journalism is still in me i would have uh, i think up till now i am endeared into the profession of journalism and i want to tell you without any fear of contradiction that should i get uh, get out of politics now you my know. next cadre, my next profession will, will be still journalism. be journalism. Wow. I wouldn't wow. mind to be interviewing <laughs> BIF is the way you are interviewing. Wow. That this would be great. nice. That would be great. It would be great because mm. that will now present you or uh, 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 propel you mm. as somebody being proud of his own profession. Mm. Yeah. If the engineers would want to call themselves engineers, mm -hmm. 
if uh, uh, people in academics who want to call themselves professors, even when they are elected president or governors of mm -hmm. states, I would still want to be proud to be called a journalist, mm -hmm. even when I'm in the House of Representatives. It doesn't matter whether I'm the chief whip or the speaker. <laughs> My first name should be, I am a trained journalist. journalist. And I'm proud mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. Now, let, let's move a bit and digress a bit into your lifestyle. Yes. I, I know that um, it's not really an easy chore. Yes. You know, having to pass motions, sit over committees, yeah. and, and do, you know, what you do here at the House of Representatives. Yes. But, you know, when you want to relax, yes. how do you relax? Uh, if I should be very frank with you, that word relax is not in the dictionary of every well of every politician, especially those of us in the parliament. Mm. That word relaxation, relax, is not in our dictionary. Mm. And if I should be specific, I want to tell you it's not in my dictionary. Mm. Because here is a man or a person in, in, in the chamber that is expected to in the first place see himself as representative of the people that elected him into the House of Representatives. And the second in, on the, at the second stage looks at himself now holding some position of responsibility, not even as a principal officer. Mm -hmm. You may be handling some ad hoc or special committees. committees yeah. And in that case, you still look at yourself from that point of responsibility. And even when you look at yourself as somebody representing your own people on the floor of the House of Representatives or in the legislative chamber, mm -hmm. In that representation alone, I can give you a hundred and one responsibility that, that, comes are, that comes with it. There will just be no hour, there will be no day, there will be no week when a principal officer, for that matter, a principal officer on the floor of the House of Representatives or in the National Assembly at large will have two eyes closed and he sleeps well. <laughs> you must always operate with one of your eyes open, open. and the other one may be closed wow. halfway. And that, that's a lot of hard work. Yes. So, so let, let me take you back to, to your role models. Yes. I, I'm sure that, you know, given, you know, how much political um, fig of a polit political figure your father was, mm. that, you know, it must have been of some influence over your life. Yes. And of course, I, I, I know that um, former governor of Kano State, yes. that's, um, now Senator Rabbi Rabbi Kofan, so yes. was, of course, also one of your role models. But you may want to mention some of the other people that you you, you think uh, you know, have, in one way or the other, influenced your life, you know, your role models, who you look up to. I think, uh, basically, like I've told you in the initial stage, my father has always been the number one role model. I came off from that family, and what he did was all about helping and supporting humanity. Mm -hmm. In, in, in the business of politics. Of course, when I came out of the family, beginning to interact with the larger society, there were so many other people. Chief MK Abiola is a very good role model to me. Because like I told you, I was elected as a member of the, would have been his National Assembly. Mm. Having been elected yes. as a president yes. in the year 1992. 1992 yeah. I would have, I would have, he would have been my president mm -hmm. because we were already elected into the chamber. Mm -hmm. And I was also a member of his own political party, the SDP. SDP. I have had a lot of interaction with MK Obiola. As I'm talking to you now, my first daughter is named Kudrat. Mm. Because I got my first daughter on the day Kudrat was killed. Wow. And I've given her that name because of so much commitment, so much love, and so much inspiration I have for MK Obiola. And nothing apart from his humility, mm. his generosity, his being man of the people. Abiola will continue to be my role model. Mm. And I will still continue to be proud of his person. I pray Almighty, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, 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 to grant him eternal rest. Mm -hmm. uh, he is of blessed memory as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And we will continue to see him as a very good role model, mm -hmm. as a nationalist, somebody who identified himself with virtually every part of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. He always saw himself as an Nigerian first before any other thing. Mm -hmm. And if you go down to the level of my state interaction as a politician, or uh, uh, Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso, the former governor of Kano State, uh, you may be surprised if I tell you we started as colleagues. Wow. He was into politics the first time I was into it. Mm -hmm. He was elected member of the House of Representatives in 1992 under the same SDP mm -hmm. dispensation when Babangida was transiting mm -hmm. to civil rule. And that was the same day that I was elected. elected but as God may have it, the wisdom of Allah, he has now made him ahead of me. He is now my leader and he remains my leader till eternity. Mm. Rabbi Musa Konkoso is someone of pride to us, base of performance. Mm. What he has done in Kano in the last four years remain an issue of discussion, not only in Kano, but even a whole, across the whole country. Mm. And those of us that are his disciples, we continue to learn from the good lessons of his own uh, wisdom, his own commitments to serve humanity, and uh, we will continue to keep the, his blood flying.
All right, so you will say that, that, that that's what inspired the Konkwasia movement. Konkwasia movement, yes. So th that's what inspired it. That, uh, precisely, that was what inspired it. Konkwasia simply means hum humility. Mm. Konkwasia means working with transparency and sincerity. Mm. Okay, we'll move to sports now. Mm. Uh, are you interested in any, any form of sports? Absolutely, no. <laughs> Absolute, not even football? No, not at all. <laughs> I have never been interested. I was at one time when I was young, mm. but there was this implication, not impl this irony, which uh, at the long run made me hate sport. Mm. Uh, what it used to be is that in those days when we were young, any time I had time to watch any match, a football match, and for whatever reason, whether I know the, the, the teams working or I didn't know them, at any point I decided to pitch up my tent with one side. At the, at the end of the game, they will lose. <laughs> and I will be left in anger and agony. <laughs> it has repeated itself all along. Mm. If I can just pass by the road now, mm. come across a football match, <laughs> park my car, stop to watch. The moment I pick a team out of them that is my own team, that team will definitely lose. <laughs> so you just say that. So no. I decided, I decided, no to, I decided to forget it. Answer. As I'm talking to you now, I have no business whatsoever to with sports. My people have been... Uh, that sometimes this has been a source of uh, uh, opposition to me in my uh, in my own in my own constituency, especially now that you know a lot of uh, youth are so interested into sports. Some people will go around and say this man is anti-sport. I'm not anti-sport by say, mm -hmm. but the fact is that I am not that keen. I'm not that interested. Mm -hmm. In but uh, for humility or carrying out people who are in sports, mm -hmm. uh, that one is mm -hmm. basic. Mm -hmm. One can always do it mm -hmm. at one time or another. But I don't have any personal or special interest to do with sports. I'm sorry I have to say it. I this know, is my candid, of course. candid opinion. <laughs> okay. Now, no, no. say we want to take you out for dinner or mm. lunch. Yes. What, what, what kind of food, as in what specific food would you like to see on the menu? Like your favorite food? For me, I've been a very conservative person. Up till now, my wives, my kids live in the village. Mm. And I was brought up from the village background, right from day one. Mm. And up till now, I sustain the village culture. culture. And what has been, uh, what, what, can, what has been what, uh, 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 a staple food in my place has always been swallow. Swallow, okay. Swallow. I'll be too old. Too old. Mm. Fura. Shinkafa. Not even Shinkafa. I am if I should be very if I should be straightforward to you, that I always eat swallow. I can eat swallow in the morning, eat swallow in afternoon. the afternoon, take swallow at night, mm -hmm. and keep it for 24 days. <laughs> that will not disturb me. Wow. It has been a very interesting thing. Okay, so swallow it says for you. Yes. Now, now there, 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 there's this thing that, you know, uh, this phrase that is very common for Nigerian men. Yes. Or people say about Nigerian men, mm. they would say that an average Nigerian man yes. must either smoke, mm. drink, or womanize. Mm. Which of the three do you do? None of the above. Wow. <laughs> I don't drink. Mm -hmm. I don't smoke. Mm -hmm. For womanize, I am womanizing because I have four wives, and these four wives are sufficient for me. <laughs> so I don't womanize outside. Mm -hmm. I only womanize within Inside. because I have four <laughs> wives. That has been the limit given to me by my religion. Mm -hmm. And I believe by the context of Islam, mm -hmm. four wives can be sufficient for an average man. Mm -hmm. And I'm sufficiently covered by my four wives. Okay, so so if someone will manage just one wife, <laughs> I am managing four, four wives, wives, womanizing within. Okay, so it's, it's an internal, an internal womanizing, womanizing because I've taken the much I'm expected to take. Okay. But womanizing on the street or outside, that is it's out of my canceled. dictionary. And all I don't right. smoke. All other things you mentioned, mm -hmm. I am not part of it. All right, all right. We've been speaking with Honorable Al Hassan Ado Dogwa. And of course, we've been getting into his world. We'll have more after this break. Stay with us. <laughs>